Hi, I'm Andrew and welcome to Peony on the Lost Voice Devlog, a 2D hand-drawn one-level platformer where you play as a brave dog that punches with its voice on a fantastical journey where the sun and the moon have stopped moving. In today's devlog, I'm with my dear friend Giacomo. We created a Steam page for our game. It would really mean a lot if you could hop on there and give us a wish list. But anyways, let's get started with the devlog. On my side, I spent the past few weeks working on most of the background assets we will need for this first era of the game, based on this sketch I showed in that block 3. Surely, the tile sets were the most complex and time-consuming part of all this process. They were quite tricky to get right, for three different reasons. First of all, I wanted to make these tile sets look as organic as possible. Considering the visual style of the project overall, Yoshi's Island was a super useful reference. The tile sets from the game don't look squarish at all, which makes them look very natural. I had to make some iterations before getting a good idea of what I wanted these tile sets to look like. Apart from the horizontal and vertical surfaces, which are just straight lines, I based the slopes on three different angles, which use one, two and three tiles, respectively. In this way, we have a nice variety of slopes that can be easily connected with each other, giving us a lot of freedom when it comes to the layout of a level. Second, I really wanted to try animating this grass to make it look even more organic and not very tileset-like. But to make sure this wouldn't affect the performance of the game, I had to limit the number of usable animated frames to only 5, which is very restrictive. And third, the organic structure of this style set and the fact it needed to be animated as well meant that connecting all the pieces together wasn't as straightforward as it would seem to be. The grass would move in between the different squares and many different tile sets needed to connect with each other flawlessly. To make my life easier, I inserted this tiny patch of grass in the tile set. That might seem just for decoration at first glance, but is actually the link between all these different squares. This way, we can have a lot of freedom with a different combination of tiles. I had no clue how animated tile sets work in Unity, but thanks to a super useful tutorial from Belvary, I managed to do that pretty easily. I have linked the video in the description for anybody who is interested in using animated tile sets. The tile set work is not over yet. I need to make another one for some rocks and other platforms, which should be easier. These won't be animated, so the process of making them won't be as complex as this grass tile set. From my side, I had the ability for Peony to crouch, and during crouching, the movement is also slowed down. Peony will now be able to go through smaller spaces. If Peony is touching the wall, it will also do this push animation. I did this by using a collider to check if Peony is touching the wall, and if the player is pressing the movement button opposed to the wall, then play the push animation. Oh, and it's also time to get rid of those boxes and actually add some enemies. I'm using Behavior Designer for Enemies AI. The boar is able to idle, run, and turn on edges and walls, and the bat can patrol around a predefined area as well as idle. I plan on adding other specific enemy behaviors like chase, shoot, and others later on. But for now, the base looks pretty solid. Both enemies can now take damage from Peony's Bark, and just like the box we had, there is a small knockback effect. I'm still working on that as there are some small bugs like this where you hit the boar when it's on the edge, and for some reason it just decides to jump right off, like it's saying, oh, nope, I'm not having this. My good friend Basti said to just let it be a feature because it's not broken, and to be honest, I think he's not wrong, so I might just leave it at that. Speaking of Basti, he's a super kind developer who is working on a very charming game called Lone Fungus and he's releasing it on early access very soon. This is not sponsored by the way, being a solo developer is really tough and he has been nothing but a really good friend to me and anybody else who's reached him out for help. If you enjoy huge complex maps, super smooth movement and diverse power-ups and abilities, then I strongly suggest you give it a go. I just thought to give him a shout out during his launch because we all know how stressful and tough it is. Apart from the tile sets, I worked on the other background pieces too. Some of the elements from this concept art were already at a good stage to be put in the game, and what I needed to do was just refine them a bit, making sure things like the hills or the clouds would connect well, and then just export them separately. I wanted to add a bit of animation to some elements like the cypress trees and the bushes in the foreground to make everything look more alive, so I animated them as if they were moved by a gentle breeze, similar to the grass tile sets. These are not based on a tile set, so we're gonna place them around to decorate the area separately. For testing purposes, I then cleaned up the idle animation of Pinny, and then put everything together to get a taste of how this all looks in action. Bear in mind, there are still missing things here and there, and no post-processing of any sort is applied yet. But tell me, what do you think of the progress so far? Does it look like something you would like to play? After working on the enemies, I added the ability for Pini to take damage, and with that a lot of complications came. 
First off, when Pini is taking damage, I added an immobile frame where Pini cannot move or bark. After that, I added a separate invincible frame, also known as iframe, which is a short duration where Pini can't take damage. My thought behind having two iframes so that when Pini gets hurt, although there's a knockback effect that gives a small negative feedback, the iframe will be able to help the player reposition themselves right after with less consequence. Creating the knockback effect for the player was a little bit different from the enemies as it is dependent on player's input. But it was no problem as I used the math f function smooth damp which created this really nice damp effect. So far I think it looks pretty good, the controls feel super smooth and I'm finally starting to see the core combat loop which I'm very happy about. Benji also added a logical tell map so that when Giacomo comes in and adds the new animated ones it wouldn't be so difficult. He also created a super useful toolkit to create different chunks of levels which will be loaded asynchronously. This will not only optimize our level loader but it will also help us organize each zones to themselves. I'm super happy and proud of the progress we've made this month and I feel like we're slowly getting close to a first vertical slice. Now, from our last time spawn, the most voted was Spinny Bark Punch. Andrew and I have been thinking non-stop about this. And in the end, I, I don't know, there is just something so appealing about having a punch coming out from your bark, you know? As many of you in the comments pointed out, the solidifying the sound idea should definitely be incorporated in both Pinny and the other creatures, be it using sounds to create platforming, combat, or anything else and just go fully crazy and see where our exploration takes us, just like how we designed the canon in Tattle Tales, for example. Through our thoughts and analysis, we realized that our game has an identity crisis. Like, yes, we have a bunch of cool ideas and concepts about the game, but what is the game's identity? So we had to start thinking. Is it the story? The combat? The platforms? What are we fully focusing on that we want to make sure it stands out? And after hours and hours of discussion, we came up with a conclusion. I know that Giacomo loves creating weird and quirky creatures, and I really love designing fights and combats. When we released Tadpole Tales, we loved watching players celebrating their success when they defeated the bosses, so it was only natural that we decided our main focus will be boss fights. Of course, that is not to say that platforming or story or other aspects of the game doesn't matter. They matter a lot. And some might argue, why not have all of these? And I think that's because all of these aspects have fundamentally different target audiences. And if we aim at all of them at once, yes, we might do them decently, but none of them will truly be excellent. And in the end, none of our target audience will truly be satisfied. This whole discussion was super useful and it is all thanks to you guys for providing so much feedback on our last video. We truly would have not been able to get this far with our progress without your input and support. So thank you so much. And now for the question of the day, which bot enemy do you like more, A or B? If so, why? Let us know why you like them in the comments below. And vote on our Discord to help us decide which one to put in our game. Now, in our live these past two weeks, we have been playing Elden Ring and oh man, this game is so freaking good. This is my first experience with a From Software game and yeah, as you would expect, I started with literally no clue of what I was doing and already died so many times. But the beautiful overworld, the memorable enemies and gameplay captivated me so much that I'm sure I'm gonna get good and stop sucking at it. I freaking love the boss fights and they are so exhilarating. Giacomo and I finally managed to beat Margit and that was definitely a lifetime achievement for us. A while ago, Super Rare Games asked us if Tadpole Tales could be featured in Super Rare Mixtape Volume 2. It was recently released and we got our own copy. It came in a USB with the shape of a mixtape. How cool is that? We felt so grateful to be part of this. Seeing our game in a physical form is like a dream come true to us. So thank you so much. From the last devlog, we received so many amazing fanners that we absolutely want to share with you. A big thank you to Jetpack, Suki, Brandy, Frenbo, and last but not least, two fantastic 3D renditions of our little doggo. One from Bruce and another one from Jakob. It's so cool to see this character taking life in 3D. Once again, you can't even imagine how excited we are when we see a new fan art posted on our Discord community. Thank you all so much for the love and time spent on this. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And that's all for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider giving us a like and subscribe to be part of our journey. You can reach us at our socials down below. And with that being said, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. Goodbye.